Why the crucifix and not the empty cross? Non-Catholics often ask why we Catholics have a crucifix and not an empty cross. Why are they above the altars in our churches? Why do we wear them on chains around our necks? Why are they found on the walls in our homes? To many, this seems to be a fixation with the death of Christ, with no focus on his resurrection. When a Catholic goes into a Protestant church, there may be a cross or crosses, but almost always without a corpus, that is, the body of Christ. For some non-Catholics, the image of the crucifix can be offensive and even uncomfortable. In some Catholic churches, the crucifix has very graphic depictions of the wounds and suffering features of Christ crucified, which is a clear reflection of the Catholic perspective on suffering. This may cause further confusion and draw criticism from the uninformed. But why the crucifix and not the empty cross? The crucifix has an important place in the liturgical tradition of the church. In most of our parish churches, the crucifix is and should be given a place of honor and prominence. It is usually located centrally above the altar or tabernacle and upon walking through the doors of the church is one of the first things to grab our attention. The church requires that a crucifix be visible during the celebration of Holy Mass to remind us of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, the representation of Calvary, made real for us each time we celebrate the Holy Eucharist. Many non-Catholics claim that having an image of the suffering Jesus on the cross takes away from the power of the resurrection. Catholics believe in the resurrection of our Lord, but we also need to remember what Christ had to endure before his resurrection, his passion and death on the cross. Without Good Friday, there can be no Easter Sunday. There are many foreshadowings of the crucifixion in the Old Testament. One that Jesus himself endorses in John chapter 3 verse 14 is that of the bronze serpent that Moses lifted up to heal Israelites. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. While it may have been the snake that the Israelites saw, behind it was the power of God. It was He who saved the ancient Israelites. The crucifix helps us to better accept and live the words of Christ to deny yourselves, take up your cross daily, and follow me. The question of the meaning of suffering, one that man has struggled with finding an answer to since the dawn of creation, finds an answer in the passion of our Lord. On the cross, Jesus embraces human suffering in a way that is incomprehensible to us weak and flawed human beings. He then goes a step further by making the suffering redemptive. St. Paul writes about this in many of his letters, where he challenges us to share in the sufferings of Christ. He even expresses joy in sharing in sufferings. Sharing in Christ's passion gives meaning to our own suffering, and as difficult and painful as it may be, our own suffering is no longer meaningless. We read in St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, where he writes, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I complete what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. So we might ask the question, what can possibly be lacking in Christ's sufferings and afflictions? St. Paul viewed both his preaching and the suffering as a way of building up the mystical body of Christ. In his first letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul writes that our faith in Jesus is centered on his sacrifice on the cross, his death. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. We are reminded of the sacrifice of our Lord at the daily representation of the sacrifice at Calvary that we Catholics know as Holy Mass. When we choose to follow Christ, we too, like Christ, 
will be crucified by the world and will need to die. We will need to die to self and to the world in order to secure our salvation. While Christ's death is memorialized forever in the image of the crucifix, we believe that our risen Lord is with us, especially in a sacramental presence in the Holy Eucharist reserved in the tabernacle. As we gaze upon the crucifix, we see what our Blessed Mother and John the Beloved saw when they stood at the foot of the cross. The crucifix is a daily reminder of our Lord speaking to the rich young man who lived a good life but was too attached to the things of the world to give them up to pick up his cross and follow Christ. We read in Thomas A. Kempis' Imitation of Christ that no man is fit to comprehend heavenly things who is not resigned to suffer adversities for Christ. Nothing is more acceptable to God and nothing more wholesome for thee in this world than to suffer willingly for Christ. And if thou wert to choose, thou oughtst to wish rather to suffer adversities for Christ's sake than to be delighted by many comforts because thou wouldst thus be more like unto Christ and more conformable to all the saints. For our merit and the advancement of our state consists not in having many sweetnesses and consolations, but rather in bearing great afflictions and tribulations. If, indeed, there had been anything better and more beneficial to man's salvation than suffering, Christ certainly would have showed it by word and example. For he manfully exhorts both his disciples that followed him and all that desire to follow him to bear the cross by saying, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So that when we have read and searched all, let this be the final consolation that through many tribulations we must enter into the kingdom of God. On the cross, what seems visible through human eyes is the infirmity of a man crucified. But in truth, when seen with the eyes of faith, we see the power of God manifest. We look beyond the visible crucifixion to see the reality of the resurrection and ultimately our chance of salvation.